friends welcome back in this session i'm going to talk about the mips design rules which will also include uh, some explanation about r type instructions and i type instructions it is going to be pretty longer than my uh, regular sessions it could take about half an hour but uh, this session is going to give you the uh, base and it will set you the platform for more computationally intensive uh, learning that you will have to offer in the near future first there are some questions that we need to answer uh, properly before we uh, go into the deep learning first one can you speak to you in latin if you do not know latin no it doesn't make any sense because you will not understand what i'm talking that's the primary point and concern over it so what is the language that i need to talk to computer to simple i need to talk to computer in the language that it can understand you can say that i'm going to talk in high level languages but that's not the answer you are going to talk in high level languages but immediately it gets converted to the instructions as i have told you in my previous lecture so my point is very simple the language that the computer understands is none other than instructions so all the instructions are grouped under one dabba called as instruction set this chapter is all about the instruction set this particular section is all about the rules and regulations that one can follow one can adhere to towards getting better computation result um, is what is done in this chapter so we are going to go with um, very simple uh, rules four rules and out of the four rules first two rules design rules will be covered here in this session the next two design rules will be taken and covered in the next session now let us uh, understand a simple point um, that notations are to be followed uh, just like writing a c code with appropriate syntax uh, we need to follow some notations in mips as you can see here um, add x comma y comma z i have three operands here and mips always wants three operands this is called mips representation and it is 32 bit wide can we change it can you make it flexible no we can't make it flexible this is the pattern that we need to follow each operations will mandatorily have three operands for sure if i tell you correct um, ms dhoni is a batsman and he is not a bowler he has got only one action and each operation i mean the each instruction can do only one operation it cannot be an all rounder if i add it is just going to add and it is not going to do anything else just like mst so i have an all rounder no it is all single work it is all one dedicated work that we are going to do and that's done through the instructions now how do i write it we need to take an example here q r s t are the registers that i am assuming right now don't worry if it is available or not i'm just taking an instance these are to be added and the result of these registers the addition should be put in into p how do i go about it in mips add p comma q comma r is the first step. i will add q and r first i'll put it in p now see that i have put a hash this is the comment line start and the comment line should be completed within the same line i cannot bend it and bring it to the next line in mips representation please follow this carefully and with due respect you need to follow it next i have got a result in p right now i mean the q and r are added in p right now now i need to add the p's content with s add p comma p comma s p and s will be added and it will go to p again now q r s is added now the next step is to add it with t add comma p comma p comma t and the result is now stored in p we require three instructions to add four registers it might appear costly but don't worry it is going to enhance the hardware design it is going to make sure that the hardware design is very simple the most important point that you need to remember is the comments terminate at the end of the line the comment lines should start with hash you cannot have multiple instructions in the same line when you write mips code it has to have only one instruction in a particular line so these are all the guidelines that you are supposed to follow and expected to follow when you go with mips now we are getting into the design rules i will go ahead with the first two design rules today in my next session maybe tomorrow or day after i'll go ahead with the rest of the two design rules the first design rule is keep it simple 
simplicity offers you regularity now very simple what do we mean by this whenever you write c programming or java or any high level programming it should be simple for you to translate it to mips instructions an instance is presented here a equal to b plus c how do you make it in mips add a comma b comma c simple it did not require you to learn rocket science it is very simple d equal to a minus c one line sub d comma a comma e a and e will be subtracted the result will go to d what is the inference here it is a very simple design it is not taking so much of complexity and direct mapping from high level programming to mips is possible and this offers you regularity anybody can learn mips so easily because it is simple now i'll take another complex example f is equal to g plus h minus i plus j g plus h will be the first to be performed i plus j should be the second to be performed the subtraction operation from the result g plus h minus i plus j will be performed third so how do i now write the mips instructions for this add g plus h g plus h should be added and as i have already told you temporary registers can be used here the temporary register will get the result i plus j to be added the temporary register t1 will get the result now i have the results in t0 and t1 sub where should i put the result in i should put the result in f sub f comma t0 comma t1 that is it so we have now seen how simple it is to relate it to the existing high level languages it's very very simple and at the same time it's very easy now please understand this point also we have registers available here but we do not have the luxury that we had in c programming to create as many number of uh, variables at as many locations as we wanted we didn't have, we didn't ever have a restriction there saying that no only you can have four variables in a code we did not have a restriction but here when you come to mips we got only 32 registers each of 32 bit wide so that's a restriction that you need to remember because registers are going to be the brain liver kidney lungs or whatever you call it for mips a register is not abundantly available here i mean the registers are not abundantly available here the numbers are limited so that's the point that you need to understand without fail now mips has 32 registers and most important point we need to go ahead with all the uh, operations and instructions only with mips and one of these 32 registers will be chosen for our operation that's it so every operation will have three operands simplicity favors regularity simplicity offers you flexibility is proven here next second design rule make it smaller what do you mean by that if i have say 128 registers for me to go to say 50th register i will have to take a lot of time to travel there because it needs electronic signals really a longer time when they will have to navigate more navigate farther which means that if it is limited i will have a comfort of searching the register that i want to reach at a shorter notice time if there are so many registers it will take a lot of time so second design rule i am making the count smaller 32 is okay and that is enough for me and most important point if you argue with me saying that sir i have 31 registers instead of 32 registers will it make sense absolutely not one or two registers are not going to make a huge difference here and it is going to be in plenty if you move maybe about 10 registers five registers if you add it is going to make a difference but in mips is going to be only 32 and this is sufficient for somebody to provide an excellent service that you render that you want that you render from mips side now another point that i want you guys to remember there are notations to be followed for the registers the registers general purpose registers are always represented by a dollar sign in precedence with s0 s1 s2 something like that the temporary registers dollar will be used uh, in the front and you need to have t0 t1 as the uh, name of the register you need to follow this notation throughout this subject otherwise it will be wrong so it is very important for you to follow this now 
the very important part the very uh, um, i mean the fund ride is all available in front of you right now. so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take an instruction add s1 s1 s2 it is an r type instruction how do you classify it as r type instruction i have only registers available here i have nothing else available here so right away i can call it as r type instruction and add sub both instructions can be qualified or can be called as r type instructions wherever you have add you can just say that yes sir it is r type instruction now how do i represent it in the maps how do i represent it in the format so add s1 s1 s2 which means i am adding s1 let me use the pen here it will be easy i am adding s1 s2 and i put the result into s1 so what do you mean by that this s1 and s2 are going to be the source registers and the s1 is again going to be the destination register so the format is very simple op code rs rt rd sa function sa is not applicable for add or sub so let us forget and forgive this fellow we have only rest of the five fields available here in front of us which are to be filled op code is always zero for add and sub operation please remember so this column will be filled with all zeros rs what is rs this is nothing but the source register so what is the source register here s1 is one of the source registers so i will put s1 here now rt what is rt rt is another source register so i will put st s2 here what is rd it is nothing but the destination register so i will put s1 here what is the function the function field we have values for it for add operation sub operation i will tell you that little later hold on now now this is how we are representing the r type instructions very clearly the compiler would clearly differentiate between the instructions based on the op code and the function code the op code will tell what instruction it is and in alliance with function code it will be able to zero in that okay we are talking about add instruction we are talking about sub instruction and all those will be clearly that it's a very easy thing so one example will make your understanding easier now i am going to ask you to translate one maps instruction to machine language why sir we need to understand how computer looks into it how computer interprets it it will make your further learning easier and that is the purpose throw the subject we are going to represent s0 to s7 as they are the registers for as 16 to 23 wherever s0 to s7 any of these registers are used i need to use 16 to 23 appropriately s0 maps to 16 s1 maps to 17 s7 maps to 23 wherever t0 to t7 comes i need to use the numbers 8 to 15 t0 maps to 8 t7 maps to 15 simple do not ever forget it if you forget it the total learning is gone now i'm going to take the simple instruction add t0 comma i'm sorry i made it uh, look odd so add t0 comma s1 comma s2 now i'm going to represent it first in the table format i mean first in the r type format this is an add instruction t0 is the destination s1 is one source s2 is another source so this is the format that we all know but it is going to be very easy t0 is nothing but the destination rd s1 is one of the sources s2 is another source which can be called rt now how am i going to map it to my existing format what is the op code for add instruction it is zero for all add instructions all r type in fact it is zero now what is rs rs is nothing but source which source are we going to talk about here s1 is the source that i'm going to talk about here so rs will have s1 and what is s1 map to 17 is what s1 map to because s0 to s7 is rated is numbered as 16 to 23 16 talks about s0 17 talks about s1 so i'll put 17 here simple what is rt rt is s2 what is s2's number it is nothing but 18 so i'll have to put 18 here in the second block 
what is rd rd is nothing but t0 temporary register what is the number that i talk about for t0 it is 8 so i'll put 8 here t0 simple what is sa sa is not applicable here for r type so forget it and what is function code for addition it is always 32 in mips so let's put 32 here simple now i have put 0 here for opcode i have put 17 for source register 1 which is s1 18 s2 8 destination register t0 i didn't even care about sa cross function code 32 sir who decided the function code to be 32 it is a rule close your eyes follow it now how many bits this opcode have 6 bits so when it is 0 i'll have to make it 32 16 8 4 2 1 this is the coding that we use for binary so i need to put six zeros here now next one what is rs rs is equated as 17 so how do i make 17 16 8 4 2 1 16 plus 1 alone will get me 17 so 1 0 0 0 1 will get me 17 similarly 1 0 0 1 0 will get me 18 0 1 0 0 0 will get me 8 and i don't care about this part because it is not applicable so let me put all zeros here and then function code is 32 so 32 8 16 8 4 2 1 only in 32 section i need to put one so it will be 1 0 0 0 0 so very simple conversion from mips to machine language this is very simple very easy and there will be a lot of questions from this area even in your competitive exams so you guys have to remember how exactly this work i hope i made it clear let's go to the next point which will be further more interesting now are we done with it completely no we aren't we need some more parts so i said that this session is going to take a little longer than it is expected are we and computer the same no we are not the same we have two different parts to understand com concepts we are very comfortable with base 10 computer is all very comfortable with binary that's the reason i did this exercise we are very comfortable with base 10 we know what is 16 17 18 but computer doesn't know it it knows only zero and ones so we converted it to machine language so we converted it to binary that it can understand now you understand why did we do this exercise it's a very simple exercise to just tell you that the way we see it is different the way computer looks into it is different now <clears throat> what is i type instruction i have introduced you with r type instruction now i'm going to introduce you with i type instruction what is i type instruction it is very simple its format is different from r type instruction and i have introduced this to you in my previous session now if you see this carefully i have got opcode 6 bits no problem rs 5 bits no problem rt 5 bits not a problem at all offset 16 bits i did not have sa i did not have anything else it is going to be only offset now if you add it 16 bits plus 521 plus 526 plus 632 the 32 bits are grouped appropriately with this four components one is opcode another one is rs another one is rt and offset so what will happen here this is i type instruction which will include load and store add immediate instructions into this category the operand i mean the value to be worked out will be part of this instruction itself that's what it is called as i type instruction i type instructions will help you in carrying out the load and store operations what is load load will help you to store the content to move the content into the register from a location from a memory location store will do the opposite store will help you to move the content from a register to a memory location store is into a location load is into a register store is to memory load is to register please understand this this is going to help you a long way now we will have to see this quickly with one example load word dollar t0 comma 32 of dollar s1 what do you mean by this load word will help you in loading the content from a memory location into a register this is what this instruction is all about and it's vice versa is what store is going to do now how do we interpret this instruction is more interesting right now now you can see that i have got a number called 32 here this is called as immediate value and that's why we qualify it 
to be an immediate addressing mode instruction now what will happen i have 32 here i have s1 here s1 is assumed to have some content like 500 500 plus 32 will be added now to get 532 and there this is nothing but the location i need to go and look in for the data now in the 532 i'll have some data say 5 10 15 something is there i'll take the data and i will load it into the register which i have specified here so this 32 plus the content from the register that you are talking about here will together get a location this together i am rounding it off right now this together will get a location and from that location you are taking a data that data is going to be loaded to t0 or any other register for that matter that you are presenting there this is called as i type instruction and this is called load instruction the load instruction is represented by lw which is called load word now i'm going to do the same exercise load word t0 32 of s1 32 dollar s1 now how do i write it in the i type format what is op code the op code we all very well know for i type instruction the op code is given and is identified by 35 so 32 plus 3 will get you 35 and the 6 bit is used for representing that op code always the load instruction is represented by 35 please remember it now rs what is the source register i have got the source register as s1 what is s1 mapped to s1 is always mapped to 17 so 17 is filled up here what is destination register t0 t0 is always referred by 8 so 8 is represented here now what is the value here 32 this 32 is the offset that i am talking about and i will have to fill it as 16 bit data so 32 is covered here and it is a 16 bit data hence i need to put all rest of the zeros prefixing this value to make it a complete 16 bit data that's all the given mips instruction is converted to a beautiful binary conversion appropriately and load word is a simple example as in how to relate it to the immediate addressing mode i hope i made it clear if you have any clarification or any queries in this particular point you may have to listen to it once again or you can ping me for any particular questions now you may ask a question sir why do we need to have the load and store instruction it's a very simple point in c or c plus plus you are free to have simple variable uh, allocation and creation i mean initialization but it also enables you to have complex data structures like structures unions etc so your storage is not at all a concern when it comes to c programming or c plus plus or java but when it comes to a microprocessor when it comes to mips we cannot store the kind of complex data structure so where do we keep it we keep it away from the processor in the memory so i need to have the content in the memory and then only i will move the content into my microprocessor and i need instructions for it that kind of instructions are load and store i need to load the content from the uh, memory to the register because you are keeping the content away from the register in the memory which is not the case with normal programming languages we need not record load and store there so and then once the result is available you cannot retain it just in the register again you need to move it to the memory location so it is inevitable for us to have instructions like load and store i hope this is clear and the last part of the session we are nearing now and how exactly add i add immediate is useful i am now given a problem statement which will let me add number four number four or five to a particular resistors content <coughs> excuse me to a particular resistors content say s4 is the register that i am talking about assuming that we do not have the facility of using add immediate instruction how will we do that we will now first we will go with this way load word t1 comma the register value as offset and then here there will be some other register to be used just in load word i taught you that the value here maybe 5 is the value that we are talking about here 5 and here in this there will be some address location 
and in that location i need to load this file appropriately what i try to say is you will have to load it first you will have to keep it in a register then you will have to move it to another register using load word i mean you will have to i i confused it a bit you need to have the content in a memory location first the memory location is to be identified and then the identified location will be used to fetch the content and it has to be used for the load word it has to be used with the load word and then only you can add it you can see that i have taken the content i'll i'll clear this again so that it will be easy i have the content available now in this location together which means i'll compute it okay so now this value 5 is available here in this location in this in this computation you will get the 5 and then i'll have to load it into the t and i will add it with the uh, register whatever is given but if add immediate is available add immediate s4 comma s4 comma 5 5 will be added with s 4s content and result is moved to s4 now you understand how simple it is you can avoid the load and store and all those things all this complex stuff and the total time that you really need to do this process will be considerably reduced and this is what the motto is all about i hope i have given you a clear clarification about i type and r type instructions along with two design rules the first design rule said that simplicity favors regularity the second design rule says that make it smaller we do not have anything longer here and it's all smaller in addition to that we have seen i type and r type instructions with some simple exercises for you guys to get accustomed to the learning process in my next session I'll talk about two other design rules and they are going to be very interesting as well. Thank you for following my channel. Stay tuned for more updates. I'll get back to you with further updates in the near future. Thank you.